Hey everybody, I'm here today for another adoption option video, finally. Took me long enough, right? So today I'm talking about the tough questions. There are a lot of tough questions. Now, the thing about adoption is that the system for adoption is so much better than it used to be. It still has a ton, a ton of work to do, and it has so far to go because the system is just not nearly where it should be. However, there has been a lot of realization that therapy is important, that all of these things that the kids have gone through or are going through are very traumatic, long-lasting, effective things. So getting into the wrong family and realizing that there are right families for some children and wrong families for some children is very, very important. And I am so grateful that the system has really changed in terms of really trying to advocate more for the children themselves and getting them into the right families. So let's just kind of talk about what questions are tough. For one, what kind of adoption are you going to go for? It's really hard to give a lot of things up when you're talking about adopting um, with infertility and not having had a biological child. If something, if you've always wanted to adopt and that's just something you've always wanted to do, it's a little less difficult to give up, say, naming a child. <laughs> that is a big one for me that was a little bit difficult to deal with, knowing that we may not get to pick or change or whatever a child's name to something that I or we had really wanted to name a child that was in our family. So, I mean, of course... When we started trying, we talked about names, and we talked about this and that and the other thing, and realizing that something so simple as naming a child is not going to be an option to you can be really tough. So realizing those little things that you didn't think about can be really challenging. The tougher questions that I'm really talking about, though, are abilities, races, um, situations that have happened to the child, things along those lines. First is kind of what form of adoption you're going to go for. Are you going to go for a relinquished baby where the birth family chooses you? Or are you going to go for foster care? If you're going to go for foster care, what ages? Um, and how flexible are you on your ages? What kind of situations are you willing to go maybe a little bit younger, or a little bit older? What race? What race is a huge, huge topic, and there are so many people that will tell you, well, well we're colorblind, it doesn't matter, it doesn't matter, it doesn't matter. Well, to us personally, to me and my husband, it doesn't matter what to us what race our child is. However, it does matter to the family and to the child as a unit, because if you're not, if you're being colorblind, you are not teaching them about their culture. You're teaching them that they are no different from you, which internally, as a person, it is no different. We are all people. That's who we all are. But culturally, we are all different. And if you're not honoring their culture, which is part of who they are, then you are doing them a huge disservice. And taking it a little bit farther, if you're not teaching them that some people have prejudices against their race or maybe a prejudice against them because of how they were born, you're also doing them a disservice because one day your little African-American child is going to walk into a not-so-great area of town or go to college or what have you, and he would not know why he's being harassed or why somebody's looking at him funny or understand why the African-American community isn't accepting of him necessarily or you know a thousand different things that you did not prepare him for because you were colorblind so I think that's really important to realize that colorblindness is not a good thing and it really truly doesn't exist so really teaching our children about their culture and to be proud of who they are and to realize that there are prejudices in this world and they are going to have to deal with them and arming them with you know information 
to inform people about or with comebacks when a person is being rude or how to walk away, things like that. So race is a big, big thing to consider. Uh, abilities. Are you open to a disabled child? Blind, deaf, mute, uh, Down syndrome, handicapped in wheelchair, um, you know, all these different things. And I will bring out, I'll do a video that brings out my packet of all of the things that they put down for us to, to check. Um, will consider, will not consider, yes or no. So really realizing what you and your husband or partner or wife or just you alone <laughs> are comfortable with is a really, really important thing because getting the wrong child just because you wanted a child into your home is really a recipe for disaster, to be honest. If you are not prepared to take on a blind child but marked yes just because you want to make sure you get a child in your home quicker and then happen to get a blind child into your home, that could be a huge, huge thing. And it's when that's how, you know, adoptions get disrupted and you think you can deal with it and you take it on and then it turns out you really can't. So being honest about these things is very, very important. Nobody is going to judge you as a bad person because you know you cannot deal with a child that has Down syndrome. Nobody's going to look at you like, oh, what a horrible person are you? So don't worry about that thought. Just worry about what you can or cannot handle. And that may change as you take classes. Anyway, going off on a little tangent there. What else? Um, so abilities is a big one. And like I said, I'll bring out my packet of things. Medical conditions. Medical conditions is a big one as well. Will you take an HIV? positive child? Will you take an AIDS positive child? Will you take a hemophiliac, a diabetic, a, so many different things, a kid that has epilepsy, um, cerebral palsy, just <laughs> tons of different things. So medical conditions, things like that. Um, situations. Will you take a child who has been through physical abuse, mental abuse, social abuse, um, neglect. Will you take a child who has had sexual abuse? Um, will you take siblings? Will you take a child who you don't know the situation and you don't know whether they're going to go back or not? Um, there is, there are quite a few children who, when they come into the system, they aren't legally open for adoption. Now, there's legally open for adoption children and not legally open for adoption children. The children who are legally adopted or legally open for adoption, either they were signed over by a parent or what have you, their legal guardian, or they were taken and they've already had their court hearings to, you know, the court either decided to try to reunify and it didn't work, or the court decided we are not going to give the option for a reunification with this parent. For whatever reason. Once that hearing is done and the reunification process is terminated, then there's a termination of parental rights hearing. If the termination of parental rights hearing went through, then they are legally open for adoption. They are wards of the state, and that is when a social worker is specifically going to start looking for an adoptive home for that family. So that, in terms of adoption risk itself, is low risk children. Then there's the higher risk children. <laughs> anything that anything before the termination of parental rights hearing has gone through. So they could be in process where the reunification has been terminated but not the legal rights of the parent. They could be at the very beginning. Um, they could be kids who have been in and out of the system. There could be a ton of different situations. So what risk level you're willing to take? For my husband and I, we decided that we were open to high risk. So we knew that if we got an emergency call that's saying, you know, we don't know anything about this child. We have a one-year-old boy who was just removed from his home. You have an hour to decide. We knew that we would try and get as much information as possible, but we're open to that kind of a risk. 
So you can say that, you know, I'm not okay with that. That's too much for me. And then they won't call you with those. You know? So those are kind of a basis on the tougher questions. Getting into those can be really, really hard. Um, my suggestion in terms of answering those questions is if there is something that's easy for you to answer, like, say, race, if you don't care, or if you're adamantly wanting a child that is the same race as you, go ahead and check those off fast and set them aside and then really spend some time visiting each of the other tougher questions, the abilities, the um, abuses, that kind of thing, and make sure that you are really truly getting into a situation that is really comfortable for you as an adoptive parent. Because even if the situation turns out great, you're going to need to talk about it with your children later on in life. They need to know their full story at some point. And accepting a child means accepting all of them. And you need to make sure that you are going to be okay talking about all of these things that have happened to them. And, you know, why you chose what you chose if they act and that kind of thing. So if you have any questions about the tough questions or why we chose anything or what we chose, please feel free to ask, and I will talk to you all later. Bye.